All right, welcome back to some more embellishing, a look at more embellishing in my Halloween album. This is really part two of the process portion or the embellishing portion. And what I'm doing now, I finished all the sequins, adding in the sequin um, mixes into my little shaker pockets in the last video. And now I'm gonna be doing a few other embellishment style embellishment things. Uh, what I'm deciding to do on this photo enlargement here is create a kind of like a banner of tags there or a, um, let's see, what, what can we call this? It's just essentially like three tags along the top. I love taking pictures that have a lot of sky in them or a lot of ground in them, which gives me space for either embellishments or a title or my journaling could go directly on there. In this case, it ended up becoming the top of my photo above my house became a good home to hold some of these fun tag embellishments from the kits over the last two years. This is, I'm using Halloween kits from 2002 and 2003. In this series, I have a couple other videos that walk through the entire process from the very beginning of looking for and establishing my original design formula, finding my photos, uh, getting all of the photos in place first, and then starting the embellishing process. In the last video, I showed how I created sequined uh, shaker pockets and did a few other embellishments. And then in this video, I'm going to show you the rest of the process. There is another video as well, which will just be a full walkthrough of the completed album with music. So with these tags, I am adding on little brads at the top. I also made the tag with the witch's hat a little bit smaller just so that it was not as long as the spider web one. And then I'm gonna add one more of the little word phrase strips there in the middle. I wanted to bring in some of the darker orange color. So that's gonna be added in there here. Those strips there have the same phrase repeated multiple times. So they're really easy ones to cut up and use as word phrases or as little flags. Because I had already added the brad into this one, I just decided to add a little bit of adhesive and hold it in place there. I like how that one turned out. I think that that's a fun thing that you could do with tags that are from the kit or from your stash as well. Okay, another full page photo here. I am pulling out two different pieces. One is the circle, the large paper circle with the gold rim. That is from the 2023 kit. And then the boo there, the, the die cut word is from the 2022 kit. I ran that through my sewing machine to add on the texture of the stitching that I really like. And then I'm also going to add one of the chipboard phrases below the word boo. At a certain point here in the process too, I will come back in and I will add the date. So the, I think it's 08 or 09. Well, that's I'm probably way farther along than that. <laughs> Whatever date it is, is going to get added on there. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to add a little brad into the circle. So really, at this point in the process, I am looking at each one of my photo enlargements and deciding whether or not I want to add any embellishments on top. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just leave them as they are. And then other times I like to do something simple like this that combines a couple of different embellishments together that really kind of celebrates the story. I considered adding some additional embellishments onto the the photos in my pocket and I decided against it. I'm just going to let those photos breathe. And then I was thinking about I wanted to go back to the beginning of the album and I knew that I wanted to use the Halloween die cut for the very front for essentially as creating like a little bit of a reason why. So I used the digital version of that to orient my uh, text on top and then I re-ran the whole thing through my printer so I knew exactly where to lay on the actual die cut to get the text uh, right on top. I tried to add one of the larger gold brads on there, but it was too big. So I'm going with a mini, mini brad. I think it's like a pewter. Um, I really like that. I like the having the, like a, a welcome, right? To someone who is gonna open this up and wonder what is it about? You can tell it's about Halloween. Um, but the other thing that I wanna do is, so that first one obviously is on the pumpkin vellum. And then I was looking at this Happy Halloween, the large vellum die cut. This is from the 2023. And I was like, oh, we could totally cut this out. So I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut 
open the middle of the cauldron, which will then become a home for a couple tags. And this page will be like, you know, it's obviously like the third page in the album. And it'll be directly across from the photo of myself holding a pumpkin um, when probably I was, I don't know, seven or eight years old or something, or maybe younger. I'll, I'll have to look at it again. Um, but what I want to do is, is attach that onto the bat vellum there and then be able to tuck in a couple of tags so I've got the spooky tag so I was thinking through the process of like okay how do I want to do this what do I want to just adhere it on there and because I've already done a bunch of stitching in this particular project I decided that I wanted to stitch it so I'm going to temporarily adhere it in place to the bat vellum there and then I'm going to run it through the sewing machine around basically the outside like the bottom three edges I'm not going to go around the feet you'll see I just kind of did it in a half circle shape there that will allow me to tuck the tags inside super cute I mean you could put all kinds of different things inside you could put photos inside there um, it might even be cute someone out there could make a whole album if you got the digital version of those and just have repeat the cauldron over and over again like that would be a really fun shape also, if that was something that you were looking to do, is something even more fun and, and creative. So my plan with this now, once I got it on there, is that I am going to run that tag through the printer. So I'm gonna type up some journaling and, and run that through. I, for the actual adhering of these two vellum pieces, what I decided to do was run it also through the sewing machine. I'm doing a straight stitch around the outside edge um, or the outside four edges there to keep these two pages together you could use red line tape you could use washi tape you could hand stitch there's lots of different things uh, that you could do and probably even just do rolling adhesive behind but I wanted both of the pages to um, really be stuck together in a way where you didn't see the other adhesive and you would just see the stitching I just love I love the stitching. Turned out super cute. I really love how this part turned out specifically. And this is one of those ideas that didn't come to me until later in the process, right? I didn't plan this one out in the beginning. It wasn't a part of my original formula. I knew that I was going to want to try to use the larger vellum pieces, and I'm going to use the other two as well. Um, but I didn't know in the beginning, and I knew that if I just waited till a little bit farther along in the process that something uh, would, would come up for this. So what what I'm doing here is I'm picking out a couple of embellishments that I can gather together for a little tag that will sit inside of there. I've got one of the word phrase tags, I have one of the plastic tags, and then I have the word love that was in the 2022 kit. I'm going to punch um, a little hole in there using the We Are Memory Keepers hole punch, and then these will all be attached together using one brad, and then I'll slip that into the uh, vellum cauldron there ends up being a cauldron super cute I love I just love it love it I love it so much it made me so happy um just a really fun page. So there I am using that little brad to attach that in place and you can have some of those pieces stick out over the top if you want. There is the picture of me as a little kid that I am going that's going to be paired with that one. I'm going to add the I love candy on top but here you can see where again I use the digital version so I could get it in exactly the right place um, text or adding the the my story on the tag and this story is a little bit about uh, me as a kid and Halloween and just how much I love pumpkins and how much I love candy and that was those were the kinds of things that I added on there uh, be, the this particular tag when I temporarily adhered it to the paper it pulled up some of the paper on the back of the tag and so I'm going to add some pattern paper to the back of that this is some black and white pattern paper that I think was in our black and white scrapbook kit um, it might have been from something else I just went through my pattern papers and pulled out any of the ones that were uh, black and white to use as extra papers here if I needed them uh, while I was putting this particular project together. So punching the hole and then through that hole I'm going to add some more of that orange ribbon. Again, keeping it simple by just picking one style of ribbon and using that uh, throughout the whole thing. It can be super fun to have a variety and mix in some black and white and some other ones, uh, but for what I was going for for this particular project and just in keeping it somewhat simple, I just decided 
decided to go um, with the with the one color and I really I felt like that was a good choice um, for me so that tag then is going to get slipped right inside of there oh, I love it I love it I love it uh, and then I'll need to punch holes in order to add that into my album when I'm adding on wood veneer like this piece right here that I love candy piece I am using red line tape I find that that seems to be the best for some of those um, bulkier embellishments like wood veneer uh, this works really good uh, it's just so cute yes uh, such a fun a fun memory, a fun picture. So this one now is gonna get adhered to the back. This is what I did with all of the other photos and pattern papers, but I had waited on this one because I wasn't sure if I was going to add in longer journaling or do something else with it. So this part was left until this time in the process. And then as you guys have seen, whenever I adhere something back to back, then I often use my X-Acto knife and a metal ruler to trim off any extra pieces that um, where it might not be perfectly adhered back to back. And I'm just, you know, I'm going for good enough on most of these. Then I'll be using my six hole punch to get the holes punched in here so that it can be added into my Remember This album. Loved finding at least some pictures of me from Halloween growing up. That was a fun thing to add in. But if you don't have those, no worries. You know, you can even, you could even start a project like this for, you know, start this year. Start one Halloween album that you're going to add to uh, each year in the future. So now I'm just flipping through kind of to get a sense of what, do, are there any spots that I want to add something else? Any places, have I missed something that maybe I want to add in? Um, you know, add another embellishment, do something there's that full page photo again I decided to just leave that one but I think that I am going to add one on here let's see I'm thinking about it you can see me where I'm thinking about it I'm like oh nope okay I'm going to leave that one too I love it um, but here is a year where I was a witch and Katie was a witch and so this is a going to be a fun place to add in this trick-or-treat large vellum hat. I'm going to use a piece of graphics plastic as its home so it's going to live on top of there. So I'm going to cut that 12 by 12 plastic sheet. Again these have a really nice weight to them so they uh, can hold up really well as a page in an album. I'm going to cut that down to seven by eight and a quarter which is the outside of the page protector size that I like to use and then I'm going to add the vellum um, the front of or the hat to the front and then I'm going to actually cut out the same shape of the hat using one of the other patterned vellum pieces and uh, that's going to be on the back and then I'll add in some sequins on there too. I, gra I grabbed the bewitched uh, paper die cut and that is actually going to be the home for some journaling on there. Um, so yeah witches hats that's what I did on the back. So here in this case what I'm doing is I'm just going to uh, hold the vellum in place I think I end up adding on some washi tape to hold it in place while I cut it out sometimes that can help a little bit keeping it um, in the right location especially for two things that have you know a little bit of a slicker surface on there so once I got that all set up then I was able to cut that out I'm I'm going for again good enough it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, the same such a fun large shape that I'm really happy that we did these large shapes in the 2023 kit I just think that they are a fun statement uh, pieces to add into our albums to support our Halloween stories so going around cutting that out uh, then again it's going to be the um, the hat with the trick-or-treat is going to get adhered to the front of the graphics plastic and then the other um, the witch's hat pattern is going to be temporarily adhered on to the back so that I can stitch it uh, through the plastic I'm actually going to stitch the whole thing so it'll be uh, it'll go through the back and the front so there will be a line of stitching on the uh, on the hat on the front of the hat as well Let's see, what else can I tell you about that? Um, when I am stitching, I didn't do any video of myself stitching this time on my machine. I just have a brother sewing machine that I think was about $100 when I brought when I bought it probably 10 or so years ago. It's worked great for me. I just sew on paper. Well, sometimes I sew on felt. It kind of depends on. Um, I mainly just sew for memory keeping and art journaling style of projects. So I'm not um, sewing any clothes or anything like that. Uh, and I don't do really anything special with the sewing machine besides um, 
a practice. I try to practice every time before I do it just to make sure that the tension is uh, in the right spot. So you, here you can see I've got the, the trick or treat on one side and then I have the witches, or the witches hats vellum pattern on the other side. I did three sides of the hat or you know around the outside of the hat and now I'm going to add in a few more of the uh, picket fence sequin mixes there just tucking them inside um, of that which is hat, which I just think is cute, right? It's like once you go in with the sequins, it's just a fun thing to add. I'm also going to add uh, some chipboard sentiments on top of there um, once I get these all in place. Before I do that though, I'm gonna take it back over to the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch around the bottom so everything is all stitched in place. Uh, love having transparent see-through pages. And I also love in this case in particular that having this witch's hat hanging or you know, kind of floating out there there is similar to the ones that are on my front porch the floating witches hat so that was kind of I actually just thought of that right now that was not intentional but it ended up being that way I could probably put a little bit of like fishing line at the top of the hat just to make it look like it was um, hanging off the top of the page that would also be fun um, a fun thing to do I love hanging the witches hats from my porch if you've never seen a picture of those um, you can get those really cheap I ordered them from Amazon however many number of years ago now and then you can just hang them with like thumbtacks and fishing line I use um um, what are they called? Safety pins to safety pin to the top of the witch's hat and then tie the um, fishing line on top of that and then hang it, hang them from different lengths on the porch. Such a fun thing. So I'm adhering that chipboard piece. You saw that I took one of the phrases and I cut it up, just chopped it right up into um, little lengths that would fit right on the hat there. And then I'm using the red line tape to adhere those down in place. I think that I come back in and I add the date on the top of this one. I'm pretty sure that I do. I think that there's a couple of them that I'm going to be going back in here in a couple of minutes and adding on um, some of those, those gold numbers that were in the 2022 kit. Or you may have them from a previous offering. I know we've done them for December Daily before as well. Super cute. I love how this piece turned out here too. Oh my gosh, yes. All right, so then moving on as I'm just kind of flipping through seeing, you know, do I want to add anything onto these photos that are in some of the pockets? I had a couple more of the gold foil words that were from the 2022 kit. So I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive on there and then I'm going to run those through my sewing machine as well. If you are curious about a sewing machine or thinking about it, it is... Um, I think for me in, in my own personal process, once I finally had a space to leave it out, that made a big difference in using my sewing machine. It was like I needed to have it out so that it was really easily accessible. And it was only um, recently, like within the last few months that I ordered other colors. Like I had a, I almost always use red or white, um, mainly because I do a lot of it in December daily, so lots of red, but I ordered other colors. So it, for this project, I was able to use orange thread. Um, I just use the same orange thread on, on each time I was doing it. Okay. So now I'm cutting out the, another one of these paper die cuts. So in this case, I made a mistake when I was printing it and it printed wrong on there. So instead of printing directly onto the die cut, I am actually just using the digital version of the die cut, which is super easy to do. If you're somebody that, you know, either maybe you're watching this video later on and the kit is not available as of right now when I'm recording recording this, the 2023 kit is still available, but if for some reason you missed it, you can always grab the digital version and you can print these out. Um, I especially liked the shape, these larger um, die cut shapes. I thought those turned out really cute. So that little story right there is just kind of an add-in story about Aaron being a willing, willing participant um, in my Halloween uh, festivities and my desire to do fun things for Halloween. So I just add that, added that on there. I also liked that this this particular year was just kind of witch themed in general. So adding on the uh, bewitched one there like that too. I also added another one of those um, paper stars with the gold foil on them that I'm pretty sure again was from a previous December daily collection. I think that I'm going to add one right here on the pumpkins too. Um, I, but 
I am, yeah, okay, so here's, yep. First, actually, this is what I'm doing next. So I'm trying to decide, I knew I wanted to add in the more pumpkins, please, also. And I think that this was the year where I had some pumpkins on my porch, but I like really wanted more. And so then the following years, I have even a lot more. But I decided to go ahead and I just, I stitched this pumpkin onto the spider web vellum. But instead of going around the outside edge, I just did three or two, yeah, three lines um, right with the, where it says more pumpkins please so right underneath each one of those I just stitched in order to add that directly onto the vellum so that just becomes I just chose that one and decided that was where I wanted um, that one to go there's not a particular reason specifically why it's there other than than what I said a couple minutes ago about wanting more pumpkins um, as I looked around on my table I still had the uh, best costume award one of the wood veneer pieces and so I decided to add this onto a photo of Simon and Elliot, one of the many Star Wars costumes that has showed up or multiple Star Wars costumes that have showed up over the years. Um, the other thing too is when you're doing a project like this and you are adding on some thicker embellishments in certain places, it's nice to vary them both on the top and the bottom um, of the pages because if you put them all in the same place like if they're all on the top um, then you're going to have more bulk on the top so that is something that I'm mindful of as I'm working through. All right, I wanted to add a couple more embellishments on these. So this one, I'm taking one of the half circles. This is an orange one with like a black textured look to it. And I decided to add a few of the uh, word phrases. So I've got one from 2022 or 2023, and then I have the vellum from 2022, and then I'm gonna add on another one. I'm just gonna go back and forth a little bit where it's like orange, black. I think orange, black is what I do again. There might be a chipboard one mixed in there. I can't remember. I think I considered that. And then maybe I decided to go with the, uh, yeah, that's what I thought, with the other tag instead. So this is a good example of another, if you're looking for another repeated way a repeated embellishment treatment using half circles like this could be something that you could do you could use the ones there's a couple in the kit in the 2023 kit but you could also just use a circle punch and cut those in half and then layer the word phrase tags and the and the vellum pieces on top of there um this was just a fun place to add that in. Again, I'm not adding embellishments to all of my photos. I'm just kind of picking and choosing uh, which ones to kind of show you an example too of just different ways that you could do it or different ways that you could create embellishments. I'm pretty sure, let's see, do I staple that on there? I kind of think I do. I also did run that through the sewing machine. So the larger orange strips have a, um, a row of stitching below the text on those two. But I thought that was a, that turned out cute. I will be coming back and adding something to the back of that vellum in a little bit. So sometimes I just keep going, partly because I maybe don't have a specific idea, um, you know, whenever I turn to that next page, and then other times I just kind of jump around. So you're seeing a little bit of, of that on here. Here's where I was able to add the 17 for the date loved doing that. I think that I go back in here. Oh, here's what I ended up doing. Okay, there's that one. I also then took three of the circles and ran those through the sewing machine as something that could be adhered behind the pumpkin. So those are just three of the circles ran through the sewing machine. I'm leaving a strip of the, or I'm leaving some of the thread on the outside edges, just kind of dangling there. Just another choice, right? I just kind of like that look, right? It kind of gives it that I don't know, there's something by hand related to it that I really like. Um, and just the concept of threads is something that I've always really liked too, right? The threads of all these different stories. I am adding one of those gold stars on there, and I think that I'm going to also add two of those onto my uh, trail of plastic circles over there on that other side. That'll be a nice visual triangle across the spread of those two pages. So think simple, right? Think simple. It doesn't, especially when you're doing a big album like this, a big compilation album, coming up with a couple, you know, gra grabbing specific products, I think number one helps. So working from a kit, which is what I'm doing here, right? Working from two kits. And then I have a couple other things that are really, um, linking the whole project together. The stitching is one thing. Um, the, the shaker pockets is another thing. I've got the numbers for each of the years with those gold foil, um, puffy numbers. That's something that links it together. Um, the, the, 
template that I used for the um, for my main journaling with the photo. That is another thing that's that creates cohesion in this project overall too. A couple other places. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I should add more, and other times I'm like, no, I don't need to add any more. But I did add another one of these chipboard pieces on top of this particular photo. I love the white chipboard with the uh, gold foil on it. That turned out really cute. Uh, as well. So just kind of I'm flipping through, I'm looking at stuff, I'm making decisions, I'm trying to decide, you know, do I feel done? For me, that's just a feeling. Um, it doesn't, there is not a hard and fast rule of like, okay, now you have embellished enough. Now you should stop. It's really kind of like, do you feel like, do you feel satisfied? Do you feel satisfied now that you are looking back, flipping through it? And once you feel satisfied, then you're good. And if you don't feel satisfied, it might just be that you need to lower your expectations a little bit and just move on. Uh, there's always going to be another story to tell and another project to work on. So at this point, you can see here, this is where I was talking about how I was going to go back in and add in some of the dates. So this is like 2019, adding that on to the little embellishment that I had already established there. Um, I added that on to the 18 too. For this one, um, so this is in 2020. So we, there was no trick-or-treating in 2020. I did do candy boxes for everybody, which is the enlarged picture there. And then a picture of us eating dinner together. We made chili, just like I always do for a Halloween party, even though we weren't having the Halloween party on that particular year. So I'm taking another one of these tags. I'm, create, I'm turning it into a shaker. I'm using the graphics plastic sheet again that I'm cutting down. I'm going to stitch it on three sides and then I'm going to add on or add in some of the sequin mixes there to kind of follow along with one of the formula ideas or one of the embellishment ideas that I've been using throughout the album already. So sticking a few of those guys in there. I think I put some of the spider ones. I really like the spider ones. Those were super cute. Um, and then I will be stitching that closed and then adding on a uh, the ribbon and then adding it to the top of the page there. So I needed to punch a little bit of a bigger hole and then I'm gonna use that same orange ribbon that you've seen me use throughout the project to get that on there as well. I, it's, these kind of projects for me are so fun. It's such a big endeavor, right? I mean, for everything from finding, locating the photos, getting all the photos printed. This is not like a one day project. It's definitely a multi-day project. And I like breaking it down into individual pieces, which is kind of how I've broken down the videos, right? Where first I'm kind of thinking, you know, I'm gathering my photos. That's kind of the first stage. And then I'm establishing a design formula. And then I am beginning the process of, of adhering all the photos back to back and getting all the pages set up and then I am going in and adding in my embellishments and adding things to the different photos. In 2021 we weren't home for Halloween and we went to Mexico with our whole our one our whole crew so um the McCurcher kids mom Erin she came my sister was there her she brought a friend uh, a family friend and we did Mexico for Halloween and it was great I think after 2020 we all really were thankful to have an opportunity to go on a trip and be together somewhere else um, we had especially we had also missed a really big trip that we had planned in 2020 that we didn't get to um, we didn't rebook and, and change that so going to Mexico was a good it was good. It was good. So I wanted to add that in here too. I could have left it out just like the other years where I didn't have, um, you know, some where I couldn't find photos or we were gone somewhere else. Um, but I, I felt like it was easier to not include the ones from earlier on and I wanted to include this one here and to just have this big like totally different photo that doesn't look like Halloween but that was taken on Halloween and to just show that we can have traditions and sometimes sometimes we're out of town, right? Sometimes we're traveling. The pattern paper that I used behind the photo and journaling is from our Go uh, scrapbook kit. And that was a fun one to add on. It's like a big, really large um, 
text-based pattern. I also added a little bit of thread. I ran it through the sewing machine just along the top there to add a little bit of something extra on that circle embellishment. That's just one of the circles that is in the 2023 kit. And I printed out, sometimes Halloween looks like this too, um, with just on my, on my little printer and then cut that out. That's what you saw me doing there. And then I'm looking at 2022 and felt good about that. So for this project, I also decided to do a closing page. I don't always do this, but I was looking at the pattern papers that I had left over and I really liked this phases of the moon uh, pattern paper. So I decided to add this in as the last page in my album and I'm going to just write a hand write a little note because I didn't do any other handwriting in here. So I'm adding on the date that I'm completing it and then I'm handwriting just note to myself or note to whoever reads this that how fun it was to work on this project and you know how much I enjoy Halloween and how I loved bringing all of these various memories together and then I'm going to add my initials up in that top moon phase there and I'm going to call it good so remember that I have another video one more video for you on this project which is which is the full walkthrough of the completed album and that doesn't have any talking it's just music as you watch me flip through how it all came together as always I'm happy to answer any questions that if you might if you have them and make sure to check out my blog post that has all of the individual images for each of the spreads